You're off to Iceland. The plan is to dive into Silfra, a fissure filled with pure glacier water. This 206-foot deep crack is the only underwater place on the planet where you can touch two continents at once. The deeper you go, the darker it becomes. The rocky landscape looks otherworldly. Divers who dare to visit this incredible place risk having their gear frozen, getting hypothermia, or not surviving whatsoever. After all, the water temperature in Silfra Fisher is about 35 degrees Fahrenheit year-round. Your next destination is Scotland. Okay, cue the bagpipes. If you dive in the Gulf of Corryvreckan, a narrow strait between two islands, you'll see massive underwater rocks and deep holes. They create the third largest permanent whirlpool on the planet, the Corryvreckan Maelstrom. The water moves through the strait at breakneck speed. It hits the underwater rocks, and the place looks like a pot with boiling water. The waves created in the process sometimes reach a height of 15 feet, and you can still hear the roaring whirlpool from 10 miles away. It's believed the Corryvreckan Maelstrom has swallowed dozens of sailors over the centuries. They were caught unaware by the ferocity of this natural phenomenon and pulled underwater in the blink of an eye. Okay, enough bagpipes. Your adventures are getting more and more extreme. You're heading for Antarctica. There, in the Southern Ocean, you'll find the Ross Sea Ice Shelf. Say that five times real fast. Later, not now. It's roughly the size of Spain, with the ocean underneath containing as much water as the North Sea. Once, scientists drilled all the way down through this enormous chunk of ice. Imagine their astonishment when they found life in those extreme conditions. The researchers came across dozens of mysterious species not known before. The most unnerving were upside-down swimming fish and overturned sea anemones hanging in the frigid waters. Hopefully, bizarre places with a notorious reputation don't frighten you. Well, too bad, because you're about to visit the Bermuda Triangle. It's an area between Bermuda, Florida, and Puerto Rico, where planes and ships seem to vanish in thin air. For the first time, this place attracted a lot of attention in 1945. That's when five U.S. Navy planes disappeared during training. Before radio contact was lost, the flight leader said, We're entering white water. Nothing seems right. After that, the planes with 14 men flying them disappeared. Even scarier, a rescue plane with 13 people on board never came back as well. Some people believe the mythical city of Atlantis lies at the bottom of the triangle. They claim its inhabitants use extraterrestrial technologies to sink ships and crash airplanes. Others blame rare and unexplored natural phenomena, for example, magnetic anomalies, or massive pockets of flammable methane gas. There we go again. Then, if a bolt of lightning ignited a giant methane bubble near a ship or a plane, this could probably make it sink without a trace. Except the smell. But methane is found everywhere all over the world, and it never behaves this way. Some experts aren't sure there's a mystery to explain whatsoever. Lots of busy routes pass through this area. No wonder more ships and planes sink there than anywhere else. Toyama Bay If you're walking along the shore of Toyama Bay in Japan, you might be lucky to see mystical neon blue light. It's coming from underneath the water and lighting up the night sea. There aren't many places where you can see a phenomenon like this. It's the firefly squid that's responsible for the breathtaking show. The creature lives at a depth of more than 650 feet under the surface. But in spring, they gather near the coast. Sometimes, waves even wash them ashore. The light these animals emit is actually camouflage, which helps them to hide and protect themselves. During the day, the squids go back to the deep, but they come back to party near the shore at night. The light they produce isn't so bright you could read a book in the dark, but it's still quite impressive. Fly Geyser, Nevada, USA Imagine you're in a space rocket. At one point, you realize you've entered the atmosphere of some unknown planet. You haven't even realized it's there. The planet's gravity starts to pull your rocket down. Soon, it crash lands on the surface. Luckily, your spacecraft is sturdy enough to stay intact. 
So you pull on your spacesuit and crawl outside. Right in front of you, there's something you've never seen before. Incredible nature, unbelievable colors, and a bizarre mountain-like thing. And suddenly, it spews out a column of boiling water. You shake your head. Ah, this vivid imagination of yours. You're actually in Nevada, looking at Fly Ranch Geyser. Don't get disappointed, it's still marvelous. The geyser appeared in the 1960s when a geothermal power company drilled a hole. This allowed the groundwater to escape. And the colors similar to those you can see in Yellowstone National Park? All because of algae. Speaking of Yellowstone, that's another place that looks as if it's been imported from another galaxy. On an area bigger than the states of Delaware and Rhode Island combined, there are more than 10,000 hydrothermal features, 500 geysers, and incredible waterfalls. Vatnajökull Glacier, Iceland On your quest for the extraterrestrial wonders of our planet, don't forget to drop by Iceland. There, you'll find the biggest glacier in all of Europe. In some places, the ice can be more than 3,000 feet thick. Vatnajökull has 30 outlet glaciers ready to be explored. Those are channels of ice that once flew out of an ice cap, but remain stuck within the borders of the valley. As for famous Icelandic ice caves, they're formed when meltwater runs through a glacier, trying to get to the surface. This usually happens in the summer, when temperatures are higher and the water flow is more turbulent. When the temperatures go down, the water freezes. That's how the caves are shaped. So, it's smaller than half a football field, just a fifth of a Manhattan city block, and well over 100 people living there. From a distance, Magingo Island looks like a desolate rocky chunk on Lake Victoria. But zoom in closer, a little more, and you'll see that gray color isn't rocks, it's rooftops. 131 people live on this one-half-acre piece of land. Doesn't sound like much of a crowd. After all, they'd fit into one modestly-sized movie theater auditorium. But the compactness more than doubles the most densely populated city in the world, Mumbai, India. Most of the island is covered with rocks. There's barely any vegetation growing there, save for a tiny patch of green grass with a couple small trees growing on it. But no need for gardening. This island is all about fish. Locals make a fortune on catching and selling Nile perch. When you get paid by the pound, a massive fish species that can grow 6 feet long and weigh upwards of 250 pounds equals a gold mine. People here make three times what they would on the mainland. With money to spend, businesses quickly popped up on the island as well. Stores sell everything from food to any fishing supplies you might need. But most of the inhabitants' earnings goes toward the limited entertainment they have. Cafes, dice, pools, hotels… There might not be a hospital or a school, but there is a hair salon and two tailor shops. Most of the buildings are made from steel sheets, especially on the high street. There are also some makeshift huts in the alleyways. There's only one sturdy brick building. It houses the boat engines. One of the most serious problems are the heavy rains that happen pretty much every night. It's not good for the poorly equipped boats. Some 20 years ago, the island was almost entirely uninhabited. But by the 2010s, the population had reached a critical 130 people for its tiny territory. There's literally no room to build any more houses. Still, there are no official records. So some sources even claim to have counted about 500 people living there in 2009. North Yungus Road in Bolivia is one of the most picturesque and most hazardous roads in the world. Just imagine biking along a cliff trail at a mind-numbing height, overlooking the lush Bolivian jungle and misty mountains at a distance. What a view! But as soon as you realize you're riding on a 10-foot-wide stretch of road, some of which isn't even paved, you might get skin crawls. And for a good reason. Over 200 folks tumble to their demise each year on this devious mountain climb. And the absence of any guardrail doesn't help at all. Now, if you're more into walking, consider the Husseini Bridge in Pakistan. It's officially the most dangerous hanging bridge in the world, but hardly the only one in the country. It's a long and nerve-wracking traverse over Lake Borat, with many planks of the bridge missing and the whole construction creaking ominously in the wind. Still, the place has become a major tourist attraction, 
although the old and broken bridge visible nearby only adds to the impression that you're inevitably going to fall to a screaming end. Well, at least you can be thankful that the lake beneath is not Lake Natron in Tanzania. If you fall into water, you still have a chance of survival. If you fall into the waters of Natron, not so much. The pH levels here are a skin-melting 10.5. What passes for water is more like an alkaline soup. No wonder this place is so peaceful. Pretty much nothing wants to live here. And yet, flocks of flamingos come to Lake Natron to breed every few seasons, and it becomes a white-pink paradise for the period. Positively. Which can't be said about the Danakil Depression in Ethiopia. Despite its beautiful, otherworldly landscape, it's perhaps the loneliest place on Earth. Yellow, orange, and green mounds are made of salt, sulfur, and iron, creating views like nowhere else on the planet. Yet the combination of temperature and toxic minerals makes this place absolutely unlivable. Researchers coming here haven't found even microscopic life in this valley. Really, like another planet. Beautiful and desolate. Here, have a towel and prepare for some barbecue. The Darvasa gas crater is waiting. A huge hole again, this time in the ground and burning. Over 50 years ago, geologists found this spot in Turkmenia, Central Asia, and were quite a bit alarmed. There was an enormous deposit of methane, a highly flammable gas, underground. They set it on fire to prevent the gas from spreading, and since then, the holes kept burning. It's over 200 feet across and 100 feet deep, and no one knows when it'll finally run out of fuel. A place called Angel Fall speaks for itself. It does look idyllic. It's the world's tallest uninterrupted waterfall, many times taller than Niagara Falls. The water falls in cascades, and much of it evaporates on its way down, which creates an illusion of those beautiful clouds. If you're into dazzling shine, try visiting the Grand Crystal Cave in Mexico. You can only do so under professional supervision, but it's definitely worth it. Chances are, you've never seen a crystal twice your body size. In Morocco, there's a town called Chefchaouen in which the prevalent color is sky blue. Not azure, not cornflower blue, and not turquoise. Most dwellings there are painted the most beautiful shade of blue you've ever seen. The place is not easily accessible. It's located in the Rif Mountains. One more sky blue place is Santorini, which is probably a bit more easily accessible. The dwellings are painted white, but almost all the roofs are of a vibrant blue shade. The white paint is to keep the heat away and make sure you've got the most Instagrammable location. In Slovenia, don't forget to visit one of the world's most spectacular spots, Lake Bled. The color is truly aquamarine. Nope, it's not photoshopped. Right in the middle of the lake, there's a cliff which is actually a small island. There's a castle and a couple of other dwellings too. To sweeten the trip even more, try a piece of bled cream cake baked with a secret recipe. When you first see a photo of Moraine Lake in Canada, you'll probably believe it's either photoshopped or painted by a professional artist. But this place is real, combining a myriad of blue shades that feel so idyllic, you don't want to ever leave here. Bagan, the mysterious land located in Myanmar, has all the ingredients to be a truly out of the fairy tale spot. You can enjoy all the exotic vegetation, misty mountain landscape, and numerous temples riding a bike, or you can see it from a hot air balloon. The Philippines have a bunch of things to see, but there's definitely something special about local beaches. If you ever go there, the hidden beach in the El Nido itinerary is the perfect place to enjoy some solitude. The beach is securely protected from boats and unwanted weather conditions by limestone coves. In the Italian region of Liguria, there's dozens of precious beaches you'll never forget. Bay of Poets in Porto Venere is one of them. The beach is located right on the cliff, and there's also underwater caves you can swim into. It's called Bay of Poets because the legend says Byron got inspired there, swimming across the bay in search of his muse, which he eventually found.
you stare at the boundless waters of the Pacific Ocean, and on the other side, you can see the remote coast of Japan. That day in 1785 saw the most recent volcanic eruption in the small town of Aogashima. The place was built on an active volcano in the ocean close to Japan. Now, in 2020, people still live there. The island looks like a paradise. You can get there by helicopter and ferry, and it attracts lots of tourists. No one knows for sure, but it seems that the first settlements appeared on the volcanic island in the early 17th century. The soil above the volcano is rich in useful nutrients, making it a great place for farming as well as fishing. Thanks to the volcano, there are also hot springs. People cook their food on special ventilated grates that let out hot steam. The island isn't very big but its residents prefer to travel around by car because of the strong wind and rain. But the volcano is still active, and no one knows exactly when it will awaken again. Weather services track seismic activity, and plans exist to evacuate the town in case of trouble. Now we find ourselves not far away, on the big Japanese island of Shikoku. It's time to explore the small village of Nagoro. As you approach the place, it all looks pretty ordinary. Small houses, shops, a library, people sitting on benches. But you get the feeling that something's not quite right here. You decide to go to a shop to buy some food. You get out of the car and see figures of people in the distance. You wave and say hello to them, but they don't respond. They just stand there and stare at you without even moving. Creeped out, you want to get out of this place as quickly as possible. You go into the store and see large human dolls staring at you from behind the counter. They have white fabric instead of skin and black buttons in place of eyes. Almost all the people in this village are dolls. Ordinary people also live here, but there are nowhere near as many. It all started when a local woman returned to the village one day and realized there were very few residents left there. Once, about 300 people lived in Nagoro. Now there are only about 40. To increase the size of the population, she decided to create new people using threads and a needle. Every year, the number of dolls keeps growing. They sit at school desks, on the porches of houses, and in the local library, and can be seen fishing on the bridges. I'd sure like to see the reaction of anyone who visits, having never heard about this place. Our next stop is the U.S. and the small town of Centralia, Pennsylvania. This place looks lifeless. Bare trees, no vegetation, no animals, no people. All the buildings and houses are empty. But unlike other abandoned cities around the world, there's something special about this one. Almost all the roads here are broken and strewn with gravel, and thick smoke bellows out from under it. This town has been burning for more than 50 years. Centralia was once a mining town. There were shops and cafes, and people were happy to live there. The mines produced coal. One of them was abandoned, and the residents began using it as a garbage dump. In 1962, the city council decided to get rid of the garbage by burning it. But the plan failed. As soon as the garbage caught fire, the flames spread throughout the old mine. Work stopped at all the other mines because of the high carbon dioxide levels. The locals couldn't stop the fire and soon it spread underneath the whole city. Roads began to heat up, the soil was no longer fertile, and the streets slowly filled with smoke. The authorities decided to evacuate all residents from the city. Centralia became empty by 1992. Death Valley, California was recorded to reach 134 degrees Fahrenheit at one point. That's so hot that you couldn't even fry an egg on the rocks there. It would just burn within a few seconds. Unlike Dalal, it isn't always this unhospitable. It can be comfortable for humans, from November to February, and it has even seen rain and snow. The temperature might not even be far from what you have at home. This valley is also home to some stones that were nicknamed the Sailing Stones. These huge rocks sit at the bottom of a dried lake, and they sometimes move without anyone knowing why. They weigh several hundred pounds, and it wouldn't be possible for a person to move them. So the process was a complete mystery for years. 
After a while, scientists noticed that the stones moved infrequently, maybe only once every three or four years. They only move a couple of dozen feet, too. Using this information, they eventually realized that the rocks were actually being moved whenever it got icy. On the coldest nights, at the bottom of the dried-up lake, a thin layer of ice began to form. Then the wind would begin to move the rocks slowly, at a speed of 6 to 16 feet per minute along the bottom of the lake. The stones could only go so small a distance because it was icy so infrequently. We travel from the hottest place on the planet to the coldest, Vostok Station, Antarctica. The lowest temperature ever on Earth was recorded here, at negative 128 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 18 times colder than your refrigerator. It isn't just freezing, though. The station is located at an altitude of 11,500 feet. At this elevation, there's much less oxygen, which can cause dizziness and breathing problems. The people who work here have to experience the polar night. This means that they spend 120 days a year in total darkness. All of these extreme conditions combine to make it one of the most dangerous places on Earth.